Welcome to part two, episode number two of my parlor guitar build video. Uh, in this episode, I build the, I, I install the rosette and get the rosette done. Cut the hole and sand it to thickness, as you can tell, because I lost the footage for my introduction that I did before I did all this stuff. So I'm recording this part afterwards. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm not all that bright. I lost the audio for the first few clips, but luckily, if you if you want to count it this way. I actually screwed up the whole rosette in the first few clips, so I had to remake the whole thing. So those parts aren't in the footage. So here I am now redoing uh, from where I left off in the last video, but with a new piece of sumac in there. This time when I'm getting my Dremel ready to make the slot for the piece of maple, I'm going to make sure that it's in the center of the rosette. And to do that, I'll use my center ruler and calipers if I need to and whatever else I need. I'll make sure that that's right. All right, so I'm gonna make the center line here, my center ruler, in order to start it off as close to accurate as possible. So I will aim for that and then I will actually double check that I'm gonna be able to hit it and that I am in the center. So the reason why I'm able to do test cuts like this and then actually measure it and whatever is because uh, this style of guitar, the style that I'm building, the fretboard is going to cover up all of this here anyway. So it, like that's why you're able to cut out a piece to make it all fit properly. And I can do these little test cuts here. Um, I'll fill it in later on just to have it filled so that there's no little cavity there. But that's kind of the story. So now I can go and route to the line and then go on this other side and route in between the lines. Well there we go, now I have the task of getting these bent up and ready to put inside those slots. Um, I cleaned up the slots a little bit of sandpaper just so that the top edges didn't have any burrs. They look good, yeah, they look fine, I like it. Um, so I'm going to take these and I'm going to bend them to the right shape and then I'm going to cut them to the right length and get the ends done up nice so that they fit in the slots just fine. This here is my bending jig that's for bending all kinds of different pieces of wood, bending sides and different things for your guitar. So it's, all it is is a piece of aluminum that's got this mount and a light bulb on the inside. I had to put tin foil in it to, to well, not have to, but I put tin foil in it to keep the light in and to keep all as much of the heat in as possible so that it heats up the whole thing quicker. We got a little bit of water here in a container that I'm going to put my curly maple pieces in. Uh, these things here are way longer than they need to be, so if they're not in the whole way, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so once this heats up, that I can take some water, drip it on, and it just beads right off and sizzles off. I'll be able to. And these pieces. It's almost hot enough. I put a little drop of water on it, it sizzles off, but it doesn't quite bead right off. Once it beads right off, it's hot enough. This would probably work here, but I'm gonna let it get hotter. I know it can. So it's not quite to the point of it just sizzling right off. This is more than hot enough now. And it could be that the bulb's not strong enough to get it to that point anyway. So here we are. Bending You gotta be careful not to snap it and not to um, overheat it and then burn it with these. I'm gonna keep wetting it. There, I'll let it dry, let it cool off in this lid here. That way it keeps a good shape. This lid's a little bit smaller than it needs to be, but that's okay because that way when it springs back, it'll be the right size. Just about. So while those are drying out, I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about this wood that I have for the back and sides. So this here is cherry birch. Um, it is a piece of birch, it is the heartwood of, of the tree. So that's why it has this color, so it's not light like birch would normally be. Um, so this tree, to make a piece this big, must have been a huge, huge tree. Dad got this from a guy who's 
80 something and his father cut it years and years and years ago so it's been around for a long time drying for a long time and we had huge huge pieces of wood 16 foot long four by tens and whatnot that were all cherry birch the whole way through it was crazy how big they were so i took some of the planks and i cut them into stock for guitars for acoustic guitars uh, so the back and side set are from all from the same piece of wood uh, so this here is the back I have the sides here these are way big way oversized the backs oversized this is oversized the parlor guitar is quite small so it doesn't take a lot of wood but these pieces were cut oversized on purpose to make sure I had enough it wasn't a big deal to make them bigger than I needed them to be I also have a piece of cherry birch for the neck, so I'm going to be able to make a one-piece solid neck. Now, obviously, the fretboard is going to be a separate piece, but as far as the joints and all that, there's not going to be any joints in the neck other than adding the fretboard on. So that should be nice too. Another piece of cherry birch. I don't know if there's a proper term other than cherry birch for the wood. Um, it's it's just it's birch. It, I don't know what species of birch it was. It's hard to say now, now that it's just the cores and it doesn't have bark or leaves on it, so hard to say. Um, but that's, that's what that is, and it's a nice, nice looking wood. It smells nice too, so it'll be fun to work. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna try one of these just to see how springy they are. That's not bad. How's it fit? Ooh, perfect. It's gonna be a little bit too big. A little bit too tight. Great. All right. So while that dries the rest of the way over there, I'm going to change out the bit that I have in my Dremel, and I'm going to route out um, cavities on the outside of the sumac in order to put some pieces of cherry bark in. There. Slots turned out really nice. This is, this is gonna look good. Um, if you're wondering why I didn't bend those pieces while I have the while I had the jig pods, because I don't have them made yet. Um, so I'm gonna have to clean this up a little bit and get all the the, the shavings out of there and whatnot. So I'll do that right now. These pieces fit in just like a charm. I got them to fit perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue them in and put some granite on it, let it dry, and then hopefully it doesn't break anything else. Or whatever, it's hard to say. I could put enough tension on this to break the rest of the rosette. Hopefully not, we'll see what happens. That was a bubble made out of glue. Well, there you have it. I glued up these pieces um, in the rosette and I trimmed it up a little bit in between scenes off camera. I trimmed it up some. Uh, so it looks good. I need to trim up the other side. I turned, only trimmed up one half of it. If there's any gaps in it now, I'll be able to uh, run it through the drum sander and sand down a little ways and any of those gaps are probably just on the surface. Hopefully. We'll see. Should be good. Should look very good. Um, I have some cherry birch, some extra pieces that I'm going to cut and uh, thickness sand in order to fit in the outer slot and the inner slot and I'll put those in too. So obviously this is a lot bigger than I need, but 
Should be good. Okay, so I just have to clean out the slots on the outside now, get this cherry birch ready to make some strips and glue it in. There we go, now this, these pieces here are a little bit too thick, but that's fine because I have to sand them down anyway to get them to fit in here. Um, I use my table saw to cut them because I don't have a bandsaw here. This would have been a lot easier to do on a bandsaw and with a drum sander, but that's at my parents' house in dad's basement. So I can't use that at my house right now, where I am, my workshop. Uh, anyway, so I use this, this will work just fine. And I'm gonna thickness these down just by hand to fit just right in the slots. And then I have my uh, bending iron heating up, that way it can bend the pieces to get them to put in. If that even makes any sense. Okay, so this here is hot enough now. You get water on it, it sizzles right off. Since these pieces are a lot longer than the uh, early maple, I can't just stick them right in this jar. Uh, anyway, so what I'm gonna do is get them wet bend them around the form and then I'm going to stick them right in that lid like I did with the curly maple in order to try to keep their shape while they're drying out. So you can tell it's not perfect, it does bounce back quite a bit, but it does a decent job at getting it where it needs to be. Uh, when, you're, when I'm bending the sides you'll see I'll use the same jig but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually clamp it in the mold that I have. That way it's actually drawing the exact right size. If I had a mold for the rosette, that'd be nice, but I don't. So this here, even though it's smaller than it needs to be, it, it should work just fine. Well, not should it. They work with the, cur the curly maple just fine, so it'll work for sure with this just fine too. Um, it's tighter than it needs to be, but it is okay. It'll be fine. I'm gonna let this dry overnight probably and put it in tomorrow or the next day. Uh, so I'll see you in another day. For you guys, it'll just be in a second. Another day has passed. These here are now dry and ready to put in. Uh, they've taken the shape of the inside of the lid here. So now I can actually glue them in. Um, yeah, so I'll have to sand them down a little bit more to get them to fit perfectly uh, to the inside of this, these holes, and yeah, that should be good. We've got the rosette uh, outer piece fitted in just right. It took a lot of work to get it to fit perfectly, but it is fitting very nice. Uh, so I'll get that glued in after I get the other one fitted too. And that way I can glue them both together and tamp them down as a granite like I did last time. And that should be nice. Here we are again, and I need to get out my pieces of handy dandy granite, which includes handy dandy Ubatuba. Uh, so yeah, I'll do that and plant this down with those, that should be great. Well there we go, I have the granite on it, clamping it all down, quite a lot of pressure. These each weigh quite a bit, so it'll be good. It has a lot of pressure on there to clamp those pieces in, and tomorrow, once it's dry, I'll be able to clean it all up. It's another day, it's storming outside quite a bit, so let's take a look and see how this dry. It's 
now I just have to flatten this all out, cut out the sound hole, and edit this video. Well, there we have it. I think this looks really good. I'm really excited to see what it looks like with finish on and to be able to do everything else to the top here. So, yeah. I'm, I'm pleased. I am very pleased with this, how this turned out. Definitely glad that I took the extra time to redo the rosette. Uh, so thanks for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video and subscribe. That actually helps me out a lot as far as uh, finding people finding the video in YouTube and whatnot. Uh, make sure you go check out my Instagram channel. Channel? Instagram page? Instagram account? Whatever. Go check it out. Uh, got lots of updates and whatnot, pictures of, of this guitar as I'm building it. Stuff that, that's in the videos, but then you'd be able to see it a little bit early. So you can go check that out. The link's in the description for that. And yeah, thanks for watching this video.